The reading is taken from Luke chapter 3, verses 21 to 38. Luke chapter 3, beginning at verse 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, or it was thought, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Malchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maa, the son of Mattathias, the son of Saman, the son of Josek, the son of Jodah, the son of Joanan, the son of Risa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adi, the son of Kosam, the son of Almadam, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Eleazar, the son of Jorim, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Mena, the son of Mathatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Aminadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalal, the son of Kenan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ah, you preempted me. I was going to say, well done, Anne, for reading so beautifully. You know, it's we don't often have genealogies read from the Bible from the front um, of church, but here at St. Paul's we are, uh, if you're a visitor, you might be wondering why we've done that. We are, for the next year and a half, going through all of Luke's gospel, and we don't want to miss a word. Uh, so we were going to read all of it. You know, it's in the word, so let's feast on it this morning. Uh, Good morning to you. My name's Andy Ruffhead. I'm the curate here at St. Paul's. Uh, And let's pray now um, as we come to God's Word and meditate on it this morning. Loving God, you are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, we want to meet with you in your Word this morning to hear it, to receive it, to understand it, to live it. Come, Holy Spirit, and enable us to do that. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, The other reason we had the genealogy read is actually it's a very significant part of Jesus' baptism, um, as we'll see in just um, a moment. Well, uh, for those of us, at suppose, who were here uh, last week on Sunday, John McGinley Uh, from the church planting movement, Myriad, uh, was visiting and he preached uh, Sunday morning and also Sunday night. Um, And uh, Sunday morning last week, he preached on John the Baptist and about each of our call to be a sign that points to Jesus, Um, a a sign that um, 
you know, communicates that is visible and that people uh, respond to. So I really encourage you, if you missed it, or if you're visiting and that sounds intriguing, uh, do check that out on our website, on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can catch up on that. And I don't know about you, but I found it, on the one hand, really exciting, that vision and that challenge, but I also found it really daunting uh, as well. And at the end of John's sermon, he, uh, he asked us to pray for someone to come to mind, to share the good news with he's not a Christian. And then he said, now get your phone out and text them right now. <laughs> Invite them to something, ask them if you can pray for them. I wonder how that's going, uh, how that's gone this last week uh, for you. And perhaps you can hold that person or those people in your mind and your heart as we come to this passage uh, this morning and you're calling to share the good news uh, with them. Because I see this sermon very much as a yes and from last week um, as this text follows directly on the heels um, of John the Baptist. Um, Now here at St. Paul's, uh, we have a vision to give everyone in our area, working together with other churches, uh, everyone a meaningful opportunity to respond to the good news of Jesus by Easter 2033, in the next 10 years. It's big, isn't it? How are we going to do it? How are we going to be this sign that points so many to Jesus? Well, we have a saviour who's Ministry wasn't just for a town or a city or a country, but for the entire world. Um, Let's see how he went about it. Let's see how he embarked upon it and follow in his footsteps. And I want to suggest that it's really significant that um, it comes after this trailblazing, discomforting uh, ministry of John the Baptist immediately we, we have this passage where Jesus is baptized, where he receives the, uh, the Holy Spirit, he's filled with the Spirit, and he receives the affirmation um, of his loving Father. Uh, I've got a few slides. Perhaps we have the first one. Uh, this is a, a painting um, by uh, American Catholic artist, Uh, Daniel Bonnell, The Baptism of the Christ. And I love how uh, Bonnell expresses the power of the moment of Jesus' baptism um, and the spirit descending, but also the shape of Jesus' life and his ministry, which was to go to the cross, to be poured out uh, for others, for you and for me. Uh, In this passage, we see the Trinity, that is, Uh, One God, three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, um, all in action together. We see the Father speaking, the Son's loved identity. You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Uh, We see the Spirit filling the Son with power. Heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And the Son, Jesus, receives. As he sets out on his public ministry, he receives um, as he goes on his way to the cross, ultimately. Uh, and at the same time, we've got these, the, each person of the Trinity doing a different thing. But we need to remember they are part of the same Godhead, one God, all willing and traveling in the same uh, direction. Uh, the Trinity comes as a package, if you like. You, know, you, you can't have one without the others, and they're always doing the same thing. So it, that means it's impossible to be filled with the Spirit and yet not uh, know that you're loved by your Heavenly Father. Another way around, too, it's, it's impossible to, be, uh, to really know deep down the love of the Father but not be filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I think sometimes this can lead us to, into doubt. We can think, oh, no, you know, if I don't think I've been filled with the Spirit, then that must mean God doesn't love me. Well, I want to suggest to you, actually, we need to look at it from the other way around. If I know the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, then that means God loves me. If I know uh, the Father loves me, then I must have the Spirit and, of course, following Jesus as well. So we're going to consider this morning the Trinitarian shape 
of the Christian life and our call to go out uh, with the good news of Jesus uh, to those around us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, So my first point is, as on the screen, filled by the Spirit. Jesus and we are filled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, In our passage, verses 21 and 22, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he went, and as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. Jesus and we, um, as his followers, are filled by the Holy Spirit. Now, now this is a new stage in Jesus' earthly life. Um, He's embarking on his public ministry. He's 30 years old around about. But until now, he hasn't been, he hasn't stepped out. And it's from now, and we'll see, just if you begin to look over the next few pages, Jesus begins preaching, teaching, healing, (coughs) pointing. And at this time, Jesus receives the Holy Spirit afresh. It's not that he didn't have the Holy Spirit before. He he is God. But he receives it afresh at this new chapter in his life. And the way we're told it happened is the Spirit descends on Jesus in bodily form like a dove. Very mysterious. What does that mean? Well, when you dig into the Greek, I'm not going to do any of the um, do any of the Greek vocab or grammar for you, but um, it's not that the spirit looked like a dove, so much as he descended like a dove. It's that kind of here we go. We've got a picture here. It's just a, like that kind of gentle flutter as a bird comes in to land. And for Jesus and for us, the Holy Spirit descends on us. He gently descends to fill us. Doesn't dive bomb us, you know, to attack us, but neither does the Spirit stay circling up there in the sky, far away from us, avoiding us. The Spirit comes gently to us. Now, have you um, ever been to one of those bird enclosures at the zoo? Um, you know where you, you kind of go in and there's loads of birds flying around and you can get those little pots of kind of sweet syrup, sweet stuff. Uh, so you go in and, and when you, once you've got this little, uh, this little uh, cup of sweet stuff, all the birds want to come and they want to, you know, they want to land on you and, and get the sweet nectar. Um, some people love that. And other people hate it. <laughs> the room will be divided. I'm probably somewhere towards being a little bit wary. Um, so they all come flocking to you when you've got this little cup of, um, of sweet syrup. And I think that might hit at some of uh, what, what's going on here. Because these birds begin to come and gently land um, on you, don't they? And uh, to get at the, the nectar. Um, It also uh, is a way of showing that actually the Holy Spirit is, you know, he's gentle, sure, but he's also powerful and unpredictable. And sometimes you're not quite sure what the bird's going to do. Are they going to peck at your finger um, or are they going to get the nectar? And Luke is particularly interested in the Holy Spirit in his gospel. And actually, when you're looking out for him, you see the Spirit all over the place um, in Luke, and he, he's particularly to do with God's guidance and God's power. So that's why the Spirit fills us, to guide us and to empower us. Let's just look at a few verses from chapters 3 and 4, so around where we are. Um, so first we've got John the Baptist uh, foretells of one who's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. So uh, Luke three sixteen, John answered them all, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then immediately after our passage this morning, Luke chapter 3, 4 verse 1, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh, The Spirit leads him. 
And then later in chapter four, Jesus comes out of the temptation in the wilderness, victorious, goes to Nazareth and begins his public ministry in partnership with the Spirit. 4 verse 14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. And then just a few verses ahead, Jesus gets up to speak at the synagogue. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. So in each of these, we see the Holy Spirit guiding and empowering Jesus in his ministry, and it's the same for you and me. Uh, Let's seek to be filled with the Spirit. So that's the first. We are filled by the Spirit. My second point is that Jesus and we are loved by the Father, and these two uh, go together. So Luke 3 Verse 22 from the, the second part of the, the verse I read earlier. A voice, or and a voice, came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So the Spirit fills and the Father loves. The love of the Father confirms to us our true identity as beloved children. And you know, at a time in our culture, in society where there's identity crisis. The Christian has identity certainty. Uh, in a culture which looks to the self to fabricate, manufacture an identity for us, we as followers of Jesus turn our eyes to God, our heavenly Father, turn our ears to him uh, to hear his words of love to us. And thank you so much um, to uh, Maria and Adam sharing that testimony um, of knowing the depth of God's love and faithfulness. This is what this is about, friends. And, and of course, there's kind of two things going on here, because on the one hand, uh, Jesus is being affirmed as the, the unique Son of God, like capital S, Son of God, divine, unique relationship with the Father. But there's more at play here uh, because, uh, and this is where the genealogy uh, comes in, because each one of us are also called into a child relationship with God. Uh, so now let's turn to the, to the genealogy which Anne so beautifully read uh, for us. Don't worry, I'm not going to read it all out again, but um, verse 23 it starts, doesn't it? Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was a son, so it was thought of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Matha, and on it goes until right at the end, verse 38, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. And there are two kind of really significant things about this list of names, this list of ancestors, this genealogy, which deserve our attention here and are related to Jesus' baptism. And the first is, it's a bit of an odd place to put uh, Jesus' ancestry, isn't it? Why has it been put here by Luke? He's a careful guy, he's ordered, he's a historian. Normally, you put it at the front, so if you look at, if you open Matthew's gospel, right at the start, here's Jesus' uh, genealogy. Whereas Luke chooses to put it here. And that's because we've just had the Father speak to Jesus, you are my son. And so now we, we get his family. Second thing that's interesting and related is that it goes back all the way to the beginning of creation, all the way to the first uh, human being in the Bible, Adam, and then even beyond that, to God. And where a genealogy stops is actually is significant. It says something, doesn't it? Often when uh, we might talk about our own uh, families, ancestors, we might kind of go back to you know, the most notable one, as far back as we can go, maybe. Or if you're looking up on the Wikipedia page for someone, it'll say, oh, you know, they're child of, this is their father, this is their mother, other notable people in their family tree. Um, for me, um, there is a, in the 17th century, there was a man called Josiah Roughhead, uh, who sold John Bunyan a barn to have a church in, 
I'm, I'm not kidding. This, this actually happened. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I have an ancestor um, who was worshipping with John Bunyan, uh, kind of Puritan writer, Pilgrim's Progress, and so on. Um, but, we, you know, the, the way we stop, the place we stop is significant, isn't it? And if you look in Matthew's Gospel, he stops at Abraham, because in Matthew's Gospel, he's really going for, look, Jesus is the, uh, the fulfillment of those promises to Abraham, the father of the Jewish people. But Luke goes further, goes past Abraham all the way back to Adam um, and uh, to God. And the point that's being made here is that all of us um, have a common ancestor. We're all related to Adam and ultimately to God. Uh, We're all marred by sin, yes, and estranged from our Heavenly Father. Yet all of us, every single one of us has the offer of grace, has the offer of uh, a child relationship with God. That is amazing, the, the relationship that we were created for. And so it doesn't matter uh, where you're from or what language you speak or what you look like, uh, what your identity is. You, in a sense, you are related to Jesus, and you're related to God because, uh, we, because Jesus is descended from Adam, who is the son of God. And so this is the good news here. Jesus was baptized and was declared God's son in order that all of us might also become children of God and in right relationship with him. Wow. So that's why Luke goes, we're going to put this genealogy right here, right after uh, Jesus' baptism and affirmation as the son. And we, we'll see this as we go through Luke. Luke is really concerned for the, that the gospel is going to everyone. And Jesus has a special uh, concern for the poor, for the outcast, uh, for those who are marginalized. We see it in all the gospels, of course, but especially uh, in Luke. So that's my second point. We, so first, we are filled with the Spirit. Jesus and we are filled by the Spirit, and we are loved by the Father. Uh, and where I want to land is to bring in Jesus himself. What's the point of being filled with the Spirit and being loved by the Father? Well, it is to follow Jesus, to follow the Son. So I want to close by coming back to the missionary task of the church that we looked at at the start um, and how that's expressed in our common life here at St. Paul's and as as the church um, united across the world, but also in our own lives, perhaps to that person or those people who are on our heart that we might have sent that text to, invited them to something last Sunday. Uh, We're filled with the Spirit for guidance and power, and we're loved by the Father for identity, for the reason that we follow Jesus, the Son. And these three are intended by God to work together uh, in our lives, all be working towards the same goal. Jesus received in order that he might reveal the good news through word, deed, death, and resurrection. And we receive in order that we might go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I want to share a quote um, from Tim Keller, a pastor uh, in in the US, um, in New York City. Uh, He writes this about the gospel. The gospel is this. We are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dare believe. Yet at the very same time, we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared hope. If you're a follower of Jesus, then you have been given a precious gift, a gift of knowing God, being filled by his gentle and powerful spirit, by being spoken Uh, his father, tender, compassionate love. And it's not something, we're given those things not just so we can feel nice, 
Um, and so we can receive healing for ourselves, that's important. Um, or so we can have nice experiences at church. This is to follow Jesus who went out uh, into the world and was poured out for others. Uh, not least, Leamington and Warwick and, and the world beyond, but also each of our families, our workplaces, our neighborhood, our networks. Let's go out to follow Jesus. Uh, let's seek to be filled by his spirit, filled again by his spirit for this new season, uh, for that particular person who's on your heart. And let's go loved and called as a child by our Heavenly Father. I'm going to have a time um, to pr just to pray now, have some space for that. Um, so I'd like to invite the band uh, to come up. And uh, would you all please stand, uh, if you're able, and uh, let's have a time just to... Yeah, let's respond um, to the Lord. There was a, a prophetic word which was given as, as we were praying before the service, uh, which is very simple, but is freedom. Um, and a sense of the freedom of, uh, that comes from living in Christ, it comes living life with Jesus. And if that is something that you are seeking for, that you're longing for in your life and your relationship with God. Um, offer that up to him now. Um, let's pray. And you might want to hold your hands out in front. Uh, this is a time just to receive from the Lord um, and to um, meet with him. So I pray, uh, would you come Holy Spirit now? Come, Spirit, who uh, fills, who is gentle yet powerful, who comes to set us free. Come and minister to us. I pray any of us here who are feeling dry or we feel maybe we're doubting we've ever received the filling of the Holy Spirit. Pray, would you come, Lord, now? Thank you, Lord, you come in the stillness. Thank you that you're so gentle. Thank you that even the Son of God himself, you descended gently like a dove. So would you come, Lord, and fill us, fill afresh for the coming season. We pray uh, for the love of the Father to dwell in each one of our hearts. Lord, I pray any of us who uh, are just, yeah, doubting your love for us, Maybe we've had really difficult relationships with our earthly father, or, or perhaps our earthly father has been absent or is uh, no longer with us. Lord, come and minister to us your love. Come and speak to each one of us. He hear the father say to you now, you are my Daughter, my son, whom I love, with you I'm well pleased. For you I have a purpose, I have a calling. I love you. And Lord, let us also, uh, in all of this, know uh, why you equip us to be sent out. Help us to follow Jesus. There may be uh, someone or some here who, have you, you're not a follower of Jesus. You wouldn't call yourself a Christian. The invitation is for everyone. 
everyone who is a human being, everyone who is descended, uh, is part of the human race. This invitation is for you. Will you accept it? Or maybe you've been a Christian for your whole life, for decades and decades. Will you receive it again this morning? Come, Lord, and send us out. Thank you. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that ye send us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.